Hello goat lovers, Crystal here with Blue Cactus Dairy Goats, and we have some babies that are going to be coming soon. So I thought I would just share with you guys on how to make sure you are extremely prepared so that way when the moment hits, you can just run outside and you know what to do. and everything in is my birthing bucket or you know people have birthing bags birthing baskets whatever um, so some of the supplies that we always have on hand are going to be a lamb puller now it's sterilized and in bags but I'll show you guys this is actually going to help when you can't if you do have to worst case scenario go in and reposition the babies then um, Sometimes they get stuck in there and you can't really get them out. There's not a lot of room to work. Um, so anyway, this is just a lamb puller. The theory would be to get this in there and wrap it around um, the head or, or some feet and the head. And then you pull this and then you can pull them out. So it, it will grip them for you. So we always have this. Towels. We have a large supply of towels that I use just for birthing, um, just to get their face cleaned off and, and get the majority of the mucus off of them. Gloves are very important, um, so I just have an abundance of them in a Ziploc bag um, so that they stay clean. And then I also have um, long ones. So these ones are actually going to go up to your arm just in case. I keep wipes on hand just to wipe, wipe my hands if again if, if uh, something I do need to assist in the labor I'm going to clean my hands with the wipes and then I'm going to use um, the alcohol for your hands and then put the gloves on. Um, this is OB lube, you know, you don't want to go in there when you're all dry, your hands are dry, your gloves are dry, you want to make it as, you know, whatever, it lubes it up. I have ProBios, and this is for the mamas, just because it is stressful labor, especially if any of you um, have been through labor, you know, so this is just going to help them keep their room in good. Jump start. This is something I use for the babies. Um, if they, especially if you have to assist, sometimes it can be pretty rough um, on the babies. So I'm going to give them some jump start if they're looking a little sluggish, or if I ever have to assist with a with pulling a kid out. Um, Solidium and vitamin E paste. Now I typically don't have issues with the kids, but if you have if you've ever had goat kids. Um, and you see that they're very weak on their pasterns, they need selenium. Um, and it, it, within a couple hours, you can see a difference once you give them the pace. So I do, of course, allow them to get on their feet. They're not going to be perfect right when they come out. They do need to have that moment to try to stand on their feet. Um, but if it looks like they have weak pasterns, I am going to give them some selenium. I cut the umbilical cords. Um, and I also put iodine on their, around their umbilical cord. Um, and what this does is it just helps dry it out. And it also, because it is like an open wound. So when they lay down and into the dirt, it can get infected um, and they can get joint ill. So this is something I do. And there is a video I have on this. I'll make sure to put the link in the description. A hook. So you are going to want to have to um, have the option of hooking them, if, especially if you're alone um, and you don't have somebody to assist, the goat's not going to stand there for you while you go in and try to, you know, position the babies or anything like that. It, it's painful for them. 
So if you have a hook to hook them to the fence or whatever you have um, is very helpful, especially if you're alone. I have a little bit of stretch for them just to give them a little bit of handfuls here and there while they are in labor. Um, I don't give scratch to anything but my milkers, but um, I do give them a little just treats when they are in labor. And the reason I don't give it to my pregnant does is because it can really make the kids pretty large. And of course, you're going to have to have water. Especially here in the desert, it's hot. So just to not have to go back and forth nonstop, I, I make sure to have some water. So another thing you're going to want to make sure you do is have your charged cell phone. Um, you know, make sure you have the number to a vet just in case anything really bad does happen. Um, you are going to want to make sure you've had that vet's number. It's in your phone. You can dial it real quick. Um, if it, again, if you need that type of assistance. Um, make sure that you have a good YouTube channel that you can have access to if you have any questions on labor. And also, something we do, we have a shovel and a wheelbarrow by. So as the kids come out, lots of slime and other things are coming out with it. So we will actually scrape it up as it comes out and just get it out of the way. Shovel it into the wheelbarrow and, and get it away. So we typically don't lay any straw down for them every once in a while we will if we have any extra for you know something else that we use but we just continue to clean the area so of course if you have the extra money and you want to lay it down then then by all means lay it down um, but again even if we lay it down for them we're taking that out because they're getting it dirty anyway so just to keep that in mind Okay, so let's talk birthing positions. You are going to need to be prepared and know what it is you're looking for um, once you do, do start seeing the baby presents itself. Ideally, you're going to see two little hooves at first and then the nose. Um, this is normal presentation. This is what you want. It, it's so much better when this is what you see. Um, so then they can come out like this with their head and then you're all good. Unless it's a really large baby with a really large head, of course, um, you might have to grab those hooves and just lightly pull while she's pushing. Um, so then there's another presentation that could be totally normal. Um, they could come out backwards. So as long as you see two hooves, you're, you're more than likely going to be okay. So the two hooves, um, if it's the back legs, the, you know, that will come out seamlessly also, in most cases. Um, when you do have to worry is if it starts presenting and it's a little tail. There's no hooves, but you see a little tail. That is no good. So they're going to come out breech is what that is called. Um, and it's just, it's too wide. So you may have to assist by pushing that baby back in and, you know, getting those feet and pulling them backwards. Um, if you, if you do have the lamb puller, then you would get that, put it around those front feet, and then you could try to pull out that way. I'm sorry, around the back feet and pull her out. Um, I have had breech kids that were small enough and they were able to come out, but again, if, if it's a larger kid, that's going to that's gonna be an issue. Um, if you see more than two hooves, that means more than one kid is trying to come out at the same time and that is not going to work. So you will have to go in and push one of the kids. Um, you know, push one of the kids back and then, you know, since you're in, maybe even try to assist in pulling another kid out. The head back, this is the worst one. I don't like this one at all. Um, if you see two hooves, they're clearly the front hooves, and there's no head, no nose that you can see coming out, you are gonna have to push that kid back in and try to position the head forward. Um, um, 
our little mayo this this last year came out that way you know and it, it was it was really hard to get her you guys have to keep in mind there is no room in there there is no room and especially if you have the Nigerians um, you know it, it gets it's a very tight squeeze here you have to just kind of concentrate it helps if I close my eyes and just picture what it is um, you know I'm feeling because it it feels like a bunch of slimy mush to be to be quite honest so it is hard to, to tell so you're gonna just close your eyes go up the feet and feel exactly what it is that you're you're feeling so try to imagine it so I know when you're sitting there and you're waiting and it looks like things are not progressing um, quite as they should you don't want to just go on and dive right in that would be like worst case scenario. You want to allow things to happen and progress as they naturally do. Um, so just try to stay calm. Try to just know in most cases, like 98% of the time, you're not going to have to do anything. Um, so, but if something were to happen, you do want to be prepared for it and know what it is that you're looking for. Alright guys, so I certainly hope that this video helped you guys out or at least makes you feel a little more prepared. Um, just, just stay calm and stay good and more than likely you're not going to need to assist in any way. But, just in case you do, it's good to be ready. And again, thank you guys so much for watching. Check the description below and I'll have other videos to other labors that you can take a look at um, as well as the umbilical cord one. And don't forget to check out the Amazon links also for any supplies needed for the birthing, birthing kits. Have a great day.